Banish Soldiers. My name is Daisy. I am the CEO and founder of Banish. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my PRP microneedling experience. PRP microneedling is based on kind of what Banish is based on. They're both based on microneedling. PRP is a little bit more of an intense form of microneedling. You can only get it done in plastic surgeon offices or dermatology offices. You need an actual medical license to do this because what they do is they actually draw a vial, a couple of vials of your blood, spin it, and put the PRP platelets on your skin after microneedling treatment. And because of that, you need to be you know, under a doctor's supervision because you are working with blood. And it's really, really important that wherever you go, you know, they're offering a safety procedures in place. For you guys who don't know, I'm the CEO and founder of Banish. Banish helps get rid of acne scars at home naturally based on at home microneedling. It works really, really well for acne scars, but sometimes people want a more intense version of Banish. So for PRP microneedling, they actually use a derma pen and the derma pen is from two to four millimeters long they usually do it at one and a half to two millimeters long you can only do it at a doctor's office or a plastic surgeon's office and the price I believe it depends on where you are where you go but it can be anywhere from 500 to maybe a thousand dollars a treatment I've seen it in that range for one treatment it's very very expensive in comparison to banish or at home microneedling because they do need to do a lot of procedures and protocols to make sure that you are safe. The first thing about PRP microneedling that you need to know is one, you need to make sure you go to a very reputable place to get it done. You guys know I don't mess with safety procedures, especially, especially, especially when you're drawing blood. It's a very, very critical thing that when people draw blood, they have to have very specific rigorous procedures to make sure that the blood does not mix up with anyone else's blood. There was actually a case in, I think it was Arizona or Vegas or somewhere that um, some patients may have gotten HIV because they mix up the vials of blood with people, which is like an absolute no-no. Because the danger of PRP facials is those um, that those blood platelets, like they're actually taking them, spinning them and putting them back onto your skin. It's very different than drawing your blood where, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go back into you. So you just need to make sure that wherever you go, do not just go to some place that's offering like a Groupon or a coupon or whatever. You need to go somewhere that's very reputable that will not mess up your blood with someone else's. For me, the PRP facials I've done, they actually spin the blood in the same room I'm in. I'm the only patient in that room, so I'm super confident that it's my blood, but sometimes they will do it at a different room or whatever, and you just wanna be super, super cautious. They're not gonna mix it up with yours. So what PRP is, is that basically they take your blood and they spin it, and then it separates into the plasma and to like the platelets. It separates into like the red blood cells, the red part, and then the plasma part, I believe, or the PRP part. And the PRP part is what they use and it's like clear and they they use that on top of your face after microneedling So apparently it has really rich growth factors It's kind of like putting like extra blood in your face uh, So that way the skin underneath can grow even faster A lot of people like to do this as an alternative for Botox and also for acne scar The first thing that they do for the PRP facial is you know you have to sign all your consent forms and you actually have to get consent by the doctor there uh, because again you are transferring blood and stuff and that makes so much more like intense and invasive first they will numb your skin they use a numbing cream you leave it on for 15 minutes and yeah you can absolutely feel nothing on it and then they use an alcohol wipe to wipe down your face and then they will start the microneedling process. So I would say the microneedling process, they use the derma pen or, you know, a vibrating microneedling wand and they do anywhere from one to probably two and a half millimeters. I think I asked for four millimeters because I wanted to try it. I don't believe they had that ability or option to do that. What I thought was really interesting was they actually... Like they did it everywhere, including along the hairline and even pretty close to the eyes, like not right underneath the eyes, but they were actually closer than I felt comfortable with under the eyes. So they did the microneedling. Did it hurt? 
I would say it didn't hurt that much, but near kind of the bony parts of my forehead and stuff, it kind of hurt a little bit. So after they did the microneedling, they actually would take a PRP platelets, they put it in like a thick syringe, and then they would just kind of like spread it around while they were doing the microneedling. So they would do the microneedling, then put the platelets in, do the microneedling, put the platelets in, do the microneedling, put the platelets in. And I will say that the PRP, even though I know it is my own blood, it just, it's, it has a really weird smell to it. I can't describe what it is. It's a pretty nauseating smell. It does not smell good. And I feel so bad for the nurses and the doctors doing that because yeah, it just does not smell good. So you put it on your face and it's kind of like a very sticky, coagulated serum on your skin and you leave it on and you're supposed to wash your face that night. Sometimes the clinic, if they're nice, they will give you the extra platelets and you can use that as a serum um, on your face for that night. I personally actually had it. I forgot to use it. I washed the PRP off that night. So this is day two of the vampire facial and um, my face hurts. It like hurts. Like last time I was trying to go to sleep and it felt like my face was pulsating and it's kind of hard to go out in public. And the worst thing about these facials is you can't exercise, like you can't do saunas, you can't sweat. And you guys know like me not exercising, it's like, it's like torture for me. So, um, yeah, so I'm just waiting for it to heal. But it, this whole experience reminds me so much of getting laser done. Hardest for me about this whole procedure was one, the downtime is a lot. Downtime was, I think it was a week, pretty much a week for the day of, and especially the two, three, four, five days after, your face is super red. Definitely looks like you got a procedure done to it. I could not go out in public, you know, I was quarantined. I was just at home all the time. And you guys also know that I work out all the time. And so I wasn't able to work out for at least a week because you don't want to have any sweat or bacteria get into your skin with the PRP facial. Also showering was also difficult because you're supposed to shower but you don't want like the water or like steam to get into your face. You basically don't want anything to touch your face. You can use a hyaluronic acid serum which I did use one day. I just created my own hyaluronic acid serum but I basically didn't do anything the other days. For the first few days after your PRP facial you're going to notice really really red the fact that you can't really go outside in public. Um, you might have to take work off because of the downtime. And then towards the end of the PRP facial, you'll start noticing a lot of shedding of your skin. So it looks like dry flakes on your skin. But you know how when you have a sunburn, your skin sheds? That's what it looked like. And then about two weeks, 10 days after, your skin is supposed to be glowing and radiant and you'll see the full effects from the facial. And then you're supposed to repeat it like once a month, I think, or every six weeks or every two months and you're supposed to do a series of sessions to get the best results. So what was my experience of the PRP facial? I'm not saying this just because I am involved with Banish, <laughs> that I am the founder of Banish. I would say that the PRP facial was better for me than a laser treatment for sure, mainly because I didn't get those little red bumps I did after a laser treatment. I got really like, irritated red bumps on underneath my skin. The PRP facial, I didn't. But the issue with the PRP facial is the downtime is huge. It's about two weeks, you know, downtime. You can't exercise, you really can't wash your face, you can't wear makeup, you can't do anything, you need to wait for your skin to heal. And then the result of it after, it was like mixed bag. Like sometimes I thought it looked really good and then sometimes I couldn't see a difference and maybe I needed more treatments. I've done the PRP facial over the course of two years. I've done it about a couple of times. I don't know if I saw like a huge difference in it. I definitely did not get people like when I started to banish and my mom and you know people around me were saying my skin was glowing. I definitely did not get any compliments in real life that my skin was glowing but maybe that's also because my skin is a lot better now than it used to be. And then also my boyfriend got really mad at me both times I did it because he said I wasted so much money on something that he didn't see <laughs> the improvement on. But then again, he's also very not super detail oriented, I would say in terms of how I look. It's a weird kind of 
like results. I didn't get any negative results in terms of my skin from it um, other than the downtime, but it wasn't like my scars were all gone. It didn't even see my scars were ironed out like I do at home microneedling. My scars always look ironed out the next day. It didn't look like that. It just looked like my skin was back to normal and just regular or whatever. So yeah, that's kind of my experience with PRP. I think it's good if you do have ethnic skin and you can't do laser treatments and you want to try something a little bit more intense than at home microneedling, but it's also very, very expensive. I said it's about $500 to $1,000 for one session. And also there's just a lot of risk when it comes to taking your blood out and then putting it back on your face. There have been risks of people maybe spreading HIV or whatever through them. Um, so you just have to be super, super careful when doing that. So it's kind of like a pros and cons things, but if microneedling has worked really well for you, if Banish has worked really well for you, maybe PRP might also work well. And also if you have the budget to do so, and again, budget and downtime, it's not a cheap treatment. Try it out for yourself and see if it works. I personally, I personally am not gonna do it again because I just, you know, it was expensive. I didn't really see the results that I wanted to. And I think just doing a at-home microneedling routine and being consistent with that is gonna lead me to far better, better results than doing PRP every now and then, or doing the vampire facial every now and then. That is my experience with the vampire facial. Let me know in the comments below if you've gotten it done, thought about it, how it went, if you would do it again, whatnot, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.